Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Crypto Poppy. Welcome to the channel. I appreciate you for stopping by. This is my first YouTube video. In five years from now, I want all of you to come back to this video and just watch this thing, how I blow it up. We're going to blow this thing up together. All right? So hit that subscribe. If you like crypto, hit the like button. If you like money, hit the subscribe. If you like baby Yoda, turn on your notifications, baby, because this is my first of many, many crypto videos. All right. So check this out. Over the last month, I have gotten so many requests, friends, family, enemies, sisters, brothers, neighbors, horses, cows, everybody wants to get into crypto. And so they're coming to me because they know I am your crypto currency expert and they want to know how I'm going to make a money. Well, guess what, guys and girls? I'm not a financial advisor. Don't listen to anything I say in this video. Please do not take it as financial advice. Do your own research. Don't put any money into crypto that you're not willing to lose. And if you lose money, put on your big boy pants because it was your decision, not mine. Having said that, this is the road to riches, baby. We're going to get rich. Crypto. All right, listen. So here's the thing. I want to do a little video and just kind of walk you through some of the basics. A lot of people are asking about how to get in. And I think there's some some kind of foundational benefits, uh, uh, basics that everybody needs to have before you buy your first crypto. So we're going to talk about the why. We're going to talk about the where. We're going to talk about the what. We're going to talk about the when. That's right. It all starts with the why, right? Simon Sinek, do I have to pay YouTube for saying his name? I don't even know yet. It's my first video. All right. So here's the deal, guys. Um, I've been in investing and trading crypto for about three years, 2017. Um, and probably the best decision I've ever made is, uh, from an investment perspective. You know, I'm still not a phenomenal trader by any means, but from an investment perspective, it's done me pretty good. So why should you invest in crypto? All right, I'm going to talk to you about just really high level what some of the fundamentals of crypto are, what some of the narratives running around out there are. So the first thing you got to understand is that crypto is uh, sort of a hedge against currencies. And traditionally, gold, silver has sort of played that role. In particular, gold has been, it's played the role of store of value. So um, if people feel like currencies are inflating, and therefore, you know, their money is worth less. Uh, that's when they start to put money in things like gold. Uh, why gold? Well, gold is difficult to mine, difficult to process. Um, although it's not finite in terms of its supply, it's still a very difficult thing uh, to come by. And people put value on things that are essentially rare. Right, you were you were a kid dealing with baseball cards. You know why 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 are baseball cards worth money? Why is Derek Jeter's rookie card worth money? Is it because there's a fundamental value attached to that baseball card? Really? Is that why? You think that you think that physical baseball card is actually has has usability functionality? It's nothing. It's nothing. All it is is you get to brag that you have a very rare baseball card. And so you got to understand that people invest in things that have limited supply that are rare. So what am I saying? Crypto's a collectible? No. No, I'm not telling you crypto's a collectible. I'm not telling you buy crypto because the value of it is going to go up because baseball card values go up. But that is one of the reasons that people actually invest in things like crypto. Um, another reason is because there's a belief that crypto uh, could actually surpass the market value of gold. So gold today represents $10 trillion in the world. 
and it's being used primarily as a store of value. Guys, gold is not worth money because it looks pretty on jewelry. This is not why gold is worth money. Uh, it's one of the reasons why, you know, there, you know, there's a, there's fundamentals attached to it and people buy gold for that reason, but that's not what's driving the price of uh, gold over the last however many years. What drives the price of gold is that people have confidence that gold will always be worth something and more than likely more than what they bought it at um, simply because it's a limited and a scarce asset. So enter Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is the first uh, man-made uh, man -made created asset that is so scarce, it actually has a finite supply. So 21 million Bitcoins will be mined in the world ever, okay, ever. What that means is that um, if you buy a Bitcoin today, someday, maybe 30, 40, 50 years from now, uh, you could essentially have something that is extremely difficult to come by and has a limited supply. 18 million Bitcoins have been mined so far and only 21 million Bitcoins will be mined in the history of Bitcoin. It'll be the year 2041 when the last Bitcoin is mined, somewhere in and around there. And um, so that represents an interesting scenario. You've got an asset that people are starting to invest in, gain confidence in, that's also limited in its supply, has a finite supply in some day. If you own a Bitcoin today, you know, 20, 30, 50 years from now, that may be the uh, most difficult asset to come by and the most valuable asset to come by. So that's kind of, you know, so, you know one of the biggest reasons why crypto is really taken off and the big narrative around we're going to replace gold. So crypto today represents I think it's $1.1 trillion market cap. Gold represents 10. If you don't think crypto can get to 10 trillion, guys, then I'm here to tell you that you're wrong. I'm here to tell you that I am so confident crypto is going to get to 10 trillion. It doesn't necessarily need to replace gold. Um, there's a lot of markets that crypto's attacking right now. Um, and we don't need, we don't need just one market. Crypto's like, I kind of I kind of look at it like the triple threat, like it is attacking all kinds of different markets and it's used for all types of different reasons, and so the potential's fairly big. So what else? so so you know if you got interested in in Bitcoin now is because you you clearly saw that whoa the price of crypto's exploding it's gone up an insane amount over the last six months. Should I get in now? Is this the right time? I'm interested in this. Why is the price even going up? Well, the price of um, crypto has been going up for a number of reasons since we entered the bull market. So um, one of the things that's happened is, is sort of COVID. And uh, it's interesting because COVID has kind of created this perfect storm where countries are printing money like crazy. Uh, not that... Not that there's anything wrong with what they're doing, and I think uh, there's a lot of people in the world that need help right now, uh, and so I don't necessarily think it's a bad idea, but it does make people think, well, if the currency that I use today, that I invest in today, that I transact in today, is freely being printed by other people, they're devaluing, debasing my currency without even my consent, uh, and essentially taking that value that they're taking out of my currency and giving it to someone else. And so you can't do that with Bitcoin. Bitcoin has a limit of supply. You can't do that. 21 million Bitcoins will be mined in the history of Bitcoin. So you can't do that. What else? There's no single organization that owns Bitcoin. Bitcoin was created by Satoshi Nakamoto. It's a person. It's many persons. Nobody knows who this person is. Nobody knows if you'll show up someday. But at the end of the day, Bitcoin is really not controlled by any single entity. So uh, it's sort of described as a decentralized currency asset because one person, one government cannot decide, you know, someday that, hey, we're going to change, you know, that hard coded value of 21 million Bitcoins and we're going to print 40 million Bitcoins. Nobody can do that to you. 
Um, that's kind of, you know, that's the narrative right now, right? Is everybody's printing money, so let's all rush to an asset that's uh, more difficult and more rare to find. Um, there's also some really interesting, I think, things that have happened over the last six months. The, the, the sentiment, like the sentiment, of, um, especially with institutions and billionaires. So, you know, to give an example, Mark Cuban a year ago literally said Bitcoin's going to zero. Going to zero, stay out of that. It's a farce, it's a scam, the same old thing you've been hearing about crypto and the reasons why you didn't invest in crypto until now. Because people like that didn't really understand the concept and why it was going to be worth what it is today. You know, when Bitcoin was $1,000, I guarantee you very little, very few people thought that it was going to hit, you know, $42,000. Not, not that long after. So you've got Mark Cuban, you've got Elon Musk. I mean, guys, the richest man in the world, literally three days ago, just put Bitcoin on the planet by literally just putting the Bitcoin symbol in his Twitter. I mean, organizations would pay gazillions of dollars to have Elon Musk put their brand underneath his name. It's pretty incredible. And he's doing it because he confirmed in an interview the day after that he's late to the game, that he acknowledges that he's probably late to crypto and he actually believes in crypto now. So there's this like billionaires are, are, are starting to understand it. Um, I think, again, COVID's made it very easy to understand why you want to be invested in something that's rare and can't be freely printed. Um, and institutions are now starting to um, move some of the, um, you know, in some cases, businesses are actually moving their entire balance sheet to crypto. So that happened. That's, you know, the biggest thing that moved this particular bull market was a gentleman by the name of Michael Saylor uh, took his company called MicroStrategy, which was a company that was trading on the public market for like, uh, I don't know, a dollar, two dollars a share. And he said, we're all in on Bitcoin. We're moving our entire balance sheet to Bitcoin. He's bought billions, literally billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin. And that was one of the big things that ignited the bull market. The ferocious bull market that we're in today. And so I want to show you um, sort of where where things stand today. So let me show you something uh, so that you understand on a macro level where we're at with Bitcoin. A lot of people are asking right now, should I get in now? Should I wait for the bubble to pop? When do I buy? Should I wait for this? Should I w just listen, listen, I'm going to put things into perspective for you on a macro level. Okay. Bitcoin has had four bull markets since its existence in, I think, 2011. Um, so essentially it, it, the pattern has been that every three to four years, we get a ferocious crypto bull market. If you're, you're coming in now because you heard all this hype, and yes, we're in a bull market. You weren't coming to me six months ago, right? Six months ago when my block folio, portfolio was down 90%, 90% and I held that. I held that thing. Diamond hands, baby. We don't let go of that. Um, and so you're coming in because all this hype, we're in the middle of this bull market. So... Many of you are saying, oh, I want to get in, I want to get in, but should I get in? Is this the right time to get in? So here's the thing. Let's put this thing into perspective. So here's sort of the bull markets that we've had in crypto. There's another there's another view of it. Um, yeah, it's an interesting view. Uh, anyway, I like the rainbow chart. The rainbow chart really shows you kind of the history of Bitcoin. So you can see the bull markets uh, in terms of where they were. Uh, what what uh, when they started? So it's like 2011, 2013, 2017, 2020 slash 2021. So here's where we're at today. Okay. Now history does not always repeat itself with markets, uh, but it certainly rhymes. And so 
one could look at this data and say, all right, so if we started this bull market down here and every other bull market in the history of Bitcoin got into the red before we, we hit a huge downtrend in a bear market, uh, you could say, one could assume that we're maybe 30, 40% of the way uh, in terms of the current bull market that we're in. That's one of the data that, pieces of the data that people use to sort of ground themselves in terms of where they are on the macro level. So is it too late? Well, if you believe that Bitcoin is going to hit the red, which it's done every single time in its history in a bull market, um, that you know that that represents numbers like Bitcoin hitting 177,000, 200,000, 300,000. Uh, certainly, there's people calling for a million dollar Bitcoin. I don't know that that's going to happen in this bull market. Uh, guarantee you, Bitcoin will hit a million dollars, but not in maybe not in this bull market. Maybe in the next one. So if you're getting in now, you have to understand something that you've got to have diamond hands. What does that mean? Uh, you can fully expect that at some point in the life cycle of that Bitcoin that you own, that Bitcoin is going to drop by 80, 90, 100%. Depends on what you buy. Some stuff drops by 1,000%. So you've got to realize that whatever, you know, you're buying in in the middle of a bull market and the middle is assumed by data, but we could literally be at the blow off top of the bull market. And when I got in in 2018, Bitcoin went from 20K, which was the all time high, to 12K. And when that happened, I said, that's it. This thing is so cheap, I got to buy it now. Well, I bought Bitcoin at 12K, 8K, 5K, I think was the last one I bought. And Bitcoin hit 3,800 people. So I saw my portfolio go down 90%. And let me tell you, it's painful. My biggest mistake is I didn't buy the dip. That's what I didn't do. I bought, yeah, sure, I bought on the way down, but trust me, I should have sold one of my daughters, especially the cutest one, to be able to really go in and buy the dip. Uh, so instead, I'm making YouTube videos here and not retired on a beach because let me tell you, when, you're, when your portfolio goes down 90%, it's, you're going to question everything. You're going to come back to this video and you're going to post some pretty nasty comments. So be prepared. Be prepared. If you're getting in at these levels, there's no telling how high this thing is going to go and there's no telling when it's going to crash. I don't care what anybody tries to tell you. I think if you go in with a mentality that I'm putting in a thousand, ten thousand, doesn't matter how much you put in, a hundred bucks, whatever you got, you put it in, then you know you gotta have the mentality that that's gonna go to zero, and and you'll be okay. You'll be okay if you have the mentality. All right, so that's kind of one of the pieces of data that that people use. Uh, there's another one that I look at often to kind of ground myself again is where are we in the bull market? This is pretty interesting. So here's the last bull market. So I've kind of drawn. Um, what, what I like to call the bull market doors. Uh, and bull market doors are essentially the trigger for we're in a bull market. So that's described by Bitcoin or any asset has basically reached its all-time high and surpassed and cemented itself above the all-time high. So the last bull market, um, you know, after, you know, 2013, blow off top, bear market, you know, people crying, blood, sweat, and tears, uh, hits rock bottom, then we go up again to that $1,000 mark, which was the old all-time high. From the moment that we surpass the old all-time high to the moment that Bitcoin finished its bull run, your gains would have been 1,500% in Bitcoin. All right. In the, in a matter of uh, uh, a year, uh, I think it was even less than a year. OK, so that shows you. And that's that's been the pattern every single bull market, every single cycle. All right. So where are we now? Where are we today? OK, well, we surpassed the old all time high. Guys, this this was like, I don't know, four weeks ago, uh, five, six weeks ago. It was in December. It feels like it was yesterday, to be honest, where we just 
exploded in this bull market. Then uh, what happened here in March was COVID, right? Like everybody ran from every asset and basically was hoarding cash uh, because of uncertainty. Uncertainty means people are like, okay, cash, you know, I better hold my cash and um, wait and see what happens. Well, from the moment that we hit the bottom of the bull market till we got to the all-time high, again, it was like no time passed. But what's even crazier is that from the moment that we passed that all-time high, which was 20K, 20K was the 2017 bull market blow off top. Um, from that point on, we Bitcoin has grown 113%. 113%. Guys, put that into perspective. For Bitcoin, that's nothing. That is absolutely nothing. Bitcoin in the last bull market grew 2,000%. So you could use that and judge for yourself. Are we at the beginning of a bull market or are we at the end of the bull market? If you believe history rhymes, then, then you believe that we got a long way to go. And then the calls for a million dollar Bitcoin start to actually, you know, I, I wouldn't say they make sense, but I would say that you can make an argument that it's it's possible that we're going to get into the half a million million dollar bitcoin in this bull market all right so that's kind of where we're at so if you're thinking about when do i buy look now thinking a little bit more on the micro level what happened with bitcoin over the last month is we went into a correction that correction was about 32 uh, percent in the previous bull markets, I'm not going to show you. You'll have to trust me. I've looked at every single bull market and all of the patterns. And I can tell you that that is 30 something percent is really a really small correction for Bitcoin. There are a lot of people calling for 27K Bitcoin. Everybody wanted 27K Bitcoin because if you do technical analysis, then you know that nothing can go up in a parabolic state forever. At some point, it's got to come down. And the faster it goes up, the less length that it has, the less uh, longevi longevity that it has. And so a lot of people were hoping we'd get a 50% correction, and that would just ignite you know, the next wave up of the bull market. But it's looking right now like 32 is all we got. So on the macro level, a lot of the uh, technical indicators that people look at says Bitcoin is overextended, it's oversold, um, it's going to crash down, and unfortunately, you know, some of those some of those indicators didn't necessarily get reset. And so you can see, like, when you're getting up to these levels, um, you know, um, it's it starts to get scary because at some point you got to think that it's going to come down, and when it comes down. Bitcoin likes to come down hard. But here we are, you know, three massively green candles. This is a monthly chart, so that represents the last three months. Well, it's really, you know, five straight months of absolute green candles, bullish, bullish, bullish. And we don't know when it's going to come to an end. But I've shown you some data that argues that we're probably going to go way higher. I mean, numbers that you can't even picture right now. And there's going to be corrections on the way. It's not going to go straight up, guys. We're going to get 50% corrections, 30% corrections. And those with the diamond hands, those are the ones that when we're at the top of the mountain, they're still going to be holding their diamonds. All right? Not financial advice. Okay. So that's kind of where we're at on the macro slash uh, micro level, uh, I'm still very bullish. Do I think it's too late to buy? No, not even close. But I think you've got to be prepared that if you buy at this stage, you could be in for a three-year bear market of hell, blood, sweat, and tears. And someday, four or five years from now, I promise you, you're going to 10x, you're going to 100x that investment. Okay? Buy the dips, guys and girls. Buy the dips. 30%, 40% correction. Buy the dips. Okay, so that's kind of the where we are, when to buy. Honestly, don't try to time the bottom. Don't try to time the top. 
like geniuses don't time the bottom and the top. It just doesn't happen. So if you're buying within a five-year outlook, just buy now. Uh, average in. My advice is average in. If, if you're going to put in $100 into Bitcoin today, my strategy would be put in $10 today, put in $10 tomorrow, put in $10 the next day, or do it once a week. Um, whatever you think is reasonable. And you're naturally averaging in. Sometimes you'll buy higher, sometimes you'll buy lower. But if it comes crashing down, you'll be like, whoa, I can get so much more Bitcoin for that $10. You feel good about it. So um, if you really don't care, just freaking buy $100 of Bitcoin and move on. Don't look at it. Don't look back. Okay. So there's the kind of the macro, the, back, the, the, the when. Should I buy now? Should I buy later? Um, what should I buy? All right. So crypto is not Bitcoin alone. Uh, Bitcoin was the first uh, founded uh, currency, cryptocurrency, based on technology called blockchain. And what a lot of people figured out was that the technology that actually was used to, be, to, to build Bitcoin was actually transformational. And so Bitcoin is also sort of open source. Anybody can clone Bitcoin and make another currency out of it. Um, don't confuse that with scarcity and, and you know, the, the, the conversation we just had, because if somebody clones Bitcoin, well, that's Bitcoin the clone. That's not creating more Bitcoin. That's just creating another Bitcoin. Uh, lots of people have done this, Bitcoin Cash, and there's a lot of, a lot of cryptocurrencies, Litecoin, that all they've done is clone Bitcoin. But guess what? They've all cloned it. They, yeah, sure, they go up and down in value, but none of them are Bitcoin, and none of them have been able to prove that. You know, theirs is better than the Bitcoin clone. Um, it just becomes another tradable asset in the cryptocurrency market. Um, so there's a lot, there's other people that have kind of taken the foundational concepts of crypto, of, of blockchain and created, rather than a currency play, you know, they're creating a current, they're, they're creating a crypto that has other fundamentals. And ETH, you know, do your research, but ETH, I'm extremely bullish on. And for me, there's basically, there's Bitcoin, there's ETH, and there's shit coins. Excuse my language, but that's just what, what it is. Everything else is a crapshoot. Everything else is a penny stock. So Bitcoin is Amazon. Um, ETH is Microsoft. And everything else is a penny stock. That's the way I look at it anyway. Um, but ETH has a ton of fundamental value. ETH's fundamentals are different than Bitcoin's, where ETH isn't being treated as a store of value and a hedge against gold. ETH is building actual applications on top of its platform. Think of ETH like a protocol. Think of ETH like the internet when the internet was created, uh, where everybody's flocking to ETH. All of the other cryptocurrency experts and builders uh, are flocking to ETH and using that as the central protocol that they build their tools on. And so what tools? Guys, ETH has so much built on top of it. Um, it's it's insane. So, so if I was going to invest in crypto today, I'd buy some Bitcoin. I'd buy some ETH. That would probably be 80 to 90. This all depends on your risk uh, adversity, but I'd probably take... 40% Bitcoin, 40% ETH. Now I'm pretty bullish on ETH. There's a lot of people that will do more Bitcoin than ETH. I'm so bullish on it that I, my portfolio is half Bitcoin, half ETH. And then take a shot at a couple of shit coins. Um, what shit coins? You know, I've got, um, I've got Dot. Dot is like uh, ETH's biggest competitor. Polka Dot is the name. Check it out. Um, I've got some Ave, my gosh, Ave, guys. Honestly, you you want a penny stock? Look at this, guys. Look at this, guys and girls. Two thousand percent since October 2020. Are you kidding me? Like Bitcoin and, and ETH are kind of like your safe bet, so they're gonna grow 10x, 100x. Guys, this stuff, the, these shit coins. You know, the few that do, maybe the 20% of the coins that do this, they go 1,000x, like insane numbers. You can't even, like, you can't even comprehend. So why not? Take a stab at some of these shit coins. Guys, you know, I, I don't know, you know, 
the story of Dogecoin is, is insane. Dogecoin was created as a joke, as a meme coin. And it's basically just got a picture of a dog. And Elon Musk, for whatever reason, loves to meme on Twitter about Dogecoin. And he's got this massive following. People on TikTok love Dogecoin. There's zero fundamental value with Dogecoin. Zero. But it's like it's like the, the darling of crypto. It's like the Derek Jeter, the LeBron James rookie card, where it's, it's incomprehensible the value that people put to this coin. Um, so if you, if you like risk, you like the darling of crypto, take a look at Doge. Uh, Card Cardano's another big competitor to ETH, uh, more of a platform play. Um, at the end of the day, here's what I'm going to tell you. I'd be looking at, if I'm looking at shit coins, I'd be looking at two different areas. One is something that has a uh, platform play. So that's ETH and all of its competitors, Polkadot, Cardano, Zilliqa. There's a whole bunch. Uh, and then there's DeFi. The DeFi coins are absolutely exploding. And why? Because DeFi represents banking for crypto. We all know the banks are making it extremely hard for us to transact in crypto. And so uh, what's happening right now in on top of the ETH protocol, which is why I'm so bullish on ETH, is a bunch of crypto companies have basically built, been building banks on top of ETH and providing all kinds of banking products um, that are pretty revolutionary uh, for crypto. And so if you want a shitcoin, find, go to DeFi um, and actually one way, one way that you guys can figure out what, what those coins are. If you go to, go to coinmarketcap.com or coingecko.com, those are your two places where you can do full analysis on the crypto market. And if you click on DeFi, you'll get all your DeFi coins right there, but sorted by market cap. I own Chainlink. I love Chainlink. Uh, Ave, I told you about guys. Ave's up 61% in seven days. I mean, insane. Uh, it's up 31% today, which is crazy. Uh, I I bought Uni at five bucks and I sold it at nine bucks. I got rid of it, and and look at where it's at today. It's like it's uh, one of the best performing DeFi coins. I, honestly, with DeFi, you pretty much can't go wrong these days. I mean, of course, it's all going to come crashing down at some point. But so far, DeFi coins are killing it. Look at UMA, guys. 227% this week. 227%. I got my eye on UMA because it's it's because of what it's doing. What's the best marketing play for a coin? Let the value grow, man. Moon. Moon. That's the best marketing play. When do people get its attention? When things are mooning. Guys, DeFi is mooning. So take some shots at DeFi. Why not? Put 1% of your portfolio into one of these coins, and it might grow to surpass the value of your entire portfolio. Okay? All right. What else do we want to talk about? So so I talked about sort of the why, some of the fundamentals. Guys, I could do a whole video just on fundamentals. I could do a whole video on the when. Um, what's next? Um, what should I buy? Kind of talk to you, right? ETH competitors or DeFi. Uh, and of course, there's Bitcoin and ETH and there's everything else. Uh, where to buy? All right. So if you're in the U.S., I'm going to make this very simple. Okay, let me, let, me, let me actually explain this. So when you buy crypto, there's a number of ways you can buy it. And uh, you can even buy it in the stock market in a round and about way, and I'll tell you about that. But if you want to truly own Bitcoin and you truly own ETH and truly own these coins, then, then you've got to buy the actual asset. And so you got to go to um, an exchange, a crypto exchange. So there's two types of exchanges in the world. There's the exchanges that deal with fiat currencies, so the U.S. dollar, the European, uh, whatever, whatever, you, whatever currency you're exchanging into crypto. There's ex there, there's currency, there's exchanges that that behave like banks that allow you to take your hard-earned money that you're earning today and change it to crypto. And those exchanges, they pretty much behave like um, um, like a bank. And so they got to go through. KYC, uh, know your customer, um, and you know they're they're pretty much like a bank. 
And so their fees are pretty high. So they've got way more overhead costs than exchanges that don't behave like banks do. And so that's kind of your initial way to get crypto, but that's not where you're going to trade your crypto. So that's your gateway drug into crypto by, you know, by Bitcoin or by ETH. I don't recommend you buy anything else on, on one of those exchanges. Um, just buy one of the two. And then from there, you got to move your crypto into a, another type of exchange, which is uh, much lower in fees. And so it allows you to move and transact between cryptocurrencies with much lower fees. Uh, and so, you know, those are, those are sort of your different exchanges. They don't have, they don't behave like banks. They don't do KYC. You literally just need an email address in a lot of these exchanges and that's it. Um, don't get any ideas about not paying crypto taxes, guys. You're going to have to pay your taxes because no matter what, Big Brother's watching. And don't believe anybody when they tell you that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are anonymous. That's a complete farce, guys. I mean, if anything, it's the opposite. Everything you do with cryptocurrencies is tracked. Everything you do is tracked. And if someday somebody can tie an address, a wallet that you own to your name, everything you've ever done on the internet related to crypto is easy to track. So please don't let people tell you that cryptocurrency are anonymous or they're used for bad, bad that, that, that the only use for cryptocurrencies is for bad people and buying drugs and guns and blah, blah, blah. It, it's, you're pretty dumb guys. You're pretty dumb if you're buying crypto because you think it's anonymous and you're doing nefarious things with it. Guys, the most anonymous currency in the world is, is the, the, the fiat currencies. Um, I mean, um, you know, unless you took a bag of uh, marked dollars from the FBI, chances are that $5 bill in your pocket can't be traced to every single person that's ever held that $5 bill. Well, guess what? It can be with Bitcoin when you buy Bitcoin. That all can be traced. So. Careful. Don't 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 think that you're getting into this game because you're gonna, you know, get away from paying your taxes or Big Brother's not gonna be able to watch you. There's an old whole another ball game with um, privacy coins. So there's there's a set of coins that are private that are anonymous that are impossible to see what you're doing within that privacy coin. Uh, if you're interested in that, I guess if you like drug dealing and drug banging and uh, doing whatever it is you want to do with your money, then I'd say, yeah, I'd be looking at privacy coins. Personally, I don't care too much for them. Don't really invest in them. Um, all right. So I think that's good for my first video, guys. Like just to kind of give you an introduction. I hope that answers a lot of the questions that I've been getting from uh, all of you in sort of different avenues. Um, Again, I this is honestly this is an incredible journey to invest in something and and watch it go up the way that that crypto's done over the last three years. Go down and go up. It's uh, yeah, man, it's it's incredible. But um, do your research. Do your research. I think um, I think I think this thing's gonna be big, and I think there's a lot of reasons and fundamental reasons why it is gonna be big. I think COVID is creating the perfect environment for crypto to blow up. And um, I think we're going to see 100K Bitcoin this year. Like, uh, I remember saying to my friends a couple months ago when Bitcoin was at, uh, what was it at? I think it was at 20K. I remember saying 30K is like a foregone conclusion. And I, I think we hit 30K like days later. It's, it's insane. ETH, I mean, ETH was at like 500 bucks, like, no, like, no, I don't know, weeks ago. Uh, and it's just absolutely exploded. So one thing, one thing I want to say about ETH, guys, and one of the big, big reasons why I'm really bullish on it is I showed you guys the bull market doors of Bitcoin. Well, ETH surpassed all-time highs uh, two days ago, I think. Uh, so the previous all-time high was 1440 right there. I'll put a line here for you guys so you can see it. Somewhere around there. Guys, look at what ETH has done from the moment that it surpassed all-time high. So if this is an evidence that when something passes all-time high, you need to buy it, then I don't know what is. I just did this in the stock market too. 
with a penny stock that surpassed all-time highs and it just completely blew up right after that one of the reasons because these algorithms right so 90 percent of the people that you're trading against is is actually algorithms and so you know what these algorithms are looking for is give me a coin that has an all-time high there's a saying that says show me a new high and i'll show you a buy and uh and i firmly believe that i haven't when it comes to surpassing all-time highs i haven't gotten a trade wrong so uh you know eth just surpassed its all-time high it's up 17 percent since that that's nothing guys that's absolutely nothing eth is gonna double and uh, by the time you watch this video it might even double in this video you might watch in two days it's it's insane you know what's in store for us uh with eth uh when you compare bitcoins two times above the all-time high at 40 something k you know it surpassed all-time high at 20k it took two weeks it took two weeks to go from 20 to 40k guys so do i think eth is going to get to 3,000 in two weeks yeah i do i know that's crazy to say that and whatever i could be wrong it's not financial advice but i'm 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 pretty bullish i'm pretty bullish on eth all right so i hope that helps happy to do more videos guys smash the likes hit the subscribe comment down below tell me Tell me what do you want to what do you want next? What do you want to focus on? You want to focus on fundamentals? You want to focus on you want a tutorial? A lot of you are just getting in. I could show you tutorials around how do I buy my first Bitcoin? How do I move Bitcoin from one address to another? Which uh, which can be seem extremely scary at first. Um, I can focus on some of that. I can focus on you know a little bit more of uh, what a, you know how to fill up my block my block folio. Where should I invest my money? Uh, I've done a lot of research on a lot of coins, so I have a lot of thoughts. Um, or maybe, you know, maybe, maybe you just want to do a live stream and just uh, shoot the shit and, uh, you know, do a little live trading and uh, blow my portfolio up live. So hit the comments. Let me know what you want to see next. I appreciate you. Thank you for watching my first video and checking out for the evening. Later.